Um, okay, there, this is a question that I've been uh, wanting to ask is, and the, the person who prompted this was actually one of the people who asked the question at the No Jumper Live show, but he asked you about this, this basic rap gang beef that happened in Boston that he was surprised that you had never made a video about. Now, I went back and did my homework and watched this Trap Geek video about it where he broke it down in pretty solid detail. And you had a pretty interesting answer where you actually said that you were a little too close to it, that you knew some of the people involved. Um, I know you might want to be a little bit close to your chest about how you speak on it, but tell me your attitude on, on covering that uh, G. Fredo beef uh, and, and what went into that decision. Well, I literally lived in the middle of it. So I, I saw a Trap Geeks video when it first came out, and there was like a couple of things wrong, but I mean, he pretty much got it all perfect. It was just a, a few slip-ups. He mistook one of the victims as someone else. Um, when I moved to Boston, I bounced around. I was in Southie first by the D Street Projects. Then I was in Dorchester off of Blue Hill. Then I was, again, in a different part of Blue Hill. And then I ended up on Delhi Street. The next street over cottage is the divider between Dorchester and Roxbury. B2 is the Roxbury Police Department. They patrol Roxbury and North Dorchester, which is the most violent area in Boston. They always have the highest crime statistics. Where I lived at, on Dudley Street, right in front of Dudley Park, um, this is where G. Fredo used to hang out at. So there was somebody that lived across. I was in the buildings. There was somebody in the house that lived across the street. He ended up getting wrapped up in that shit, too. When I was going to Roxbury Court, because I got a case out here that said I was chasing somebody with a gun, I met this kid named Gabe. Gabe knew the kid across the street from me. He knew Fredo, knew a couple of different people. At the same time, when I first moved over there, my daughter's mother, her best friend, lived in the other hood. So she lived over by Hancock, which is another street, you know what I mean? And Hancock, Cameron, like those streets beef with the people that are over here. You know what I'm saying? So she was on the other side. Her nephew used to bring me weed, even though he beefed with the people where I'm at. Her nephew ended up getting killed in a barber shop. The gun that was used in that murder was found across the street from my house. Gabe, my homie from court, who was giving me rides home, that was his boy that got caught with that gun. Gabe's boy ends up getting shot in the head in front of the pizza store that I was working at. A couple months later, Gabe gets shot in the head in front of his house, two streets down from my house. I remember when the police were coming down. So it's like, I knew people on both sides. I knew one on that side that got killed, a couple on this side that got killed, and then they got arrested. So I kind of just stayed out of it for that reason because it was just, I'm literally right in the fucking middle of this shit. And I know people on both sides, you know what I'm saying? Right. And d did anybody in your real life, life, say anything like that to you about like, oh, you should be documenting this? Or do you think that people would have been upset if you did cover it? No, at that time, I wasn't even doing that. So at, at that time, I wasn't even covering that type of stuff. After the fact is when people were bringing it up, you know what I'm saying? But it was still like close to home with that situation. Because there's a lot that people don't know that I know because I'm living out here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't want to accidentally bring something to light that isn't in the paperwork that somebody else might not know just because I know it from living on that block and being around that. Like, where Gabe's friend got killed, that was the pizza place I worked at when I was on probation. That was my second job I ever had. You know what I'm saying? Backwoods Pizza on Dudley Street. He yeah, got you, got, right you mentioned street. that, and a couple of people mentioned that uh, when we were doing the Q&A and stuff. Backwoods Pizza. I got to hit that place up someday. Yeah, well, nah, because that's a lot of shit happens over there. The kid that got caught with the gun was in there with an extendo and, you know, all types of shit, bro. We literally, like, when I worked there, people would come in just to give us the drama. Like, yo, let me get two pastelitos of pizza, and yeah, you heard about Buddy Got Shot? Like, damn. We would get the news that way, you know what I mean? But... Dudley Street's just a wild, a wild spot. So I stayed out of it just because how close to home it was. And I'm outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not just sitting in the house. I'm out here on this block. So it's like my face is seen over there. You know what I mean? I was pretty shocked by it just to hear the level of gang-related killings that were going on in Boston because it doesn't really make the news that much or you don't hear about it on a national 
level and especially to hear you know stories about dudes doing stuff that you think about being normal in chicago or la of like really straight lurking their their enemies block just just waiting for them to shoot at him or whatever like it was pretty shocking that that stuff goes on out there as well was that at all surprising to you or you you've known about all this kind of stuff obviously for a long time well living here you're gonna know about it you know what i'm saying but when i first moved up here like it's weird because where I lived at on Dudley Street, that was the most violent block I ever lived on in my life. Really? At the same time, the crime overall is nothing compared to Florida. So it's like, Florida is just over the top. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the different cities, murders are going crazy. The type of guns that are down there are crazy. Up here, I feel like people don't get shot on accident. I feel like little kids aren't getting hit by straight bullets. If you die in Boston, it's because you're specifically beefing with somebody in Boston. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like it's to the extreme. But as far as G. Fredo and uh, Cal, you know, they said G. Fredo was literally, this is what they're accusing him of. They're accusing him of murdering people and then making songs detailing exactly how he did it. Right. In, and showing in the music video, like almost re re vivid. Recreating it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something that even the, the most morbid Chicago guys, I don't think we've really seen them go that far. Yeah, they, they say he was really rocking out. So, you know, and I think he just pled guilty in this case, too, and he's waiting for sentencing. Really? So, what, he's going to get like 20 years or something? I have no idea how much time he's going to get. Damn. That's some heavy yeah, shit. They're, they're facing a lot, though. Is that the first person who, who, from your perspective, was doing like hundreds of thousands of views on their videos in Boston talking about street shit like that? I mean, I would think so. But that's just because I didn't grow up in Boston. I just moved here. To be honest with you, I moved back to Boston to not be in nothing, to not know anybody, to not be involved in anything. So when I started meeting people and then I met Gabe and then he got killed, I just fell back off of being friendly because I was like, I'm not trying to just keep knowing people and then get into some shit. And then I, like, bro, like I was what, 20 when I got out of prison. I'm not about to be 21, 22 and just start like, oh yeah, this is my block now. We going to war with, them. I don't know them. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I stayed out of a lot of the shit. You know what I mean? Like I didn't really care to get involved. And uh, they were the first ones that I know of that were really making noise like that out here. And really in the street shit where it's like, yeah, they're getting views, but they're also doing some shit too. Right. Crazy. Yeah. We, there was one question I answered when we were doing that Q&A where a kid was like, or I think he was talking about a rapper coming out of, up out of Boston or what would need to happen, et cetera. And I said, like, you know, realistically, if Boston had a King Vaughn or a Lil Durk, like that's the most likely artist to pop off out of there is somebody who would be really telling the most graphic possible depiction of what's going on in the streets right and how probably violence in boston is less as a result of the fact that there isn't this super well documented gang beef shit going on in the media like the way there is with chicago but i, I wasn't really knowing at the time that there already had been a a pretty similar uh, narrative to what i had been talking about nah yeah i mean you got the heat street projects and mission hell going back and fucking forth non-stop people getting shot on both sides and i think uh if i'm not mistaken it was like a couple of years ago boston had one of the like statistically highest uh unsolved murders like they just weren't solving shit at all like 30 percent of the murders were getting solved so a lot of people were getting touched and nobody was getting picked up on it but the numbers aren't there compared to other cities you know what i mean but boston's population isn't as big as chicago at the same time like so that's another thing to take into consideration. It's only a few areas where people are killing. But if you live in that area, you feel like it's, it's crazy because this is where everything's going down at. And Dudley Street, the entire Dudley Street goes from Dorchester to Roxbury. Dudley's always been one of those areas where people are going to get killed every single fucking year. It's guaranteed someone's going to die on Dudley. Well, okay, thanks for the update on that. This 1090J clip is from a Patreon exclusive interview that we did, so you can go check it out by supporting us at patreon.com slash nojumper or onlyfans.com slash nojumper.